There are about 100 traffic signals in the city of Arvada, and the city uses a complex network of tools to operate them all, including computers, and yes, even cameras. Hi, I'm Councilor Bob Pfeiffer, and today we're going to learn how they do that. I have Joe Rezeki, the Traffic Engineering Manager, with us today, and I want to talk to him about how our traffic intersections work. Joe, I can't tell you how many times that citizens have notified me and asked, hey, am I being videotaped by this camera, and what are they doing? So maybe yeah. you can explain. You know, we get the same questions all the time. People call up, they say, do you have the videotape of that intersection at that time? And we say, no, you know, we don't. They do not tape anyone. They do not have any recording capabilities. They are nothing more than an input device to the traffic controller to tell us if there's cars at the intersection. So those cameras are not watching red light runners or uh, accidents or anything like that? No, they're basically used to detect cars on the side street so the light knows when to change. So you know, when I drive through the city, sometimes I've noticed that it seems like I hit a red light every time I get to a corner. Um, maybe can you explain how that uh, traffic flow works and, and how it interacts with the system? We do make a, a very concerned effort to coordinate the lights on the systems throughout the city. But occasionally things will happen like uh, a fire truck or an ambulance or some other type of emergency vehicle like a police car comes through. And they have devices on them that preempt the traffic signal and give them a priority. So if they're going down Ralston Road, they're going to get the priority on the lights and it'll set the system out of step for a few cycles. And that can cause something like hitting a red light at each one. And so you communicate the, uh, with these systems remotely. Every traffic signal uh, within the city does communicate back to City Hall mm -hmm. and you're able to determine what's going on with that traffic. Can you explain how that works within a system like this one? We have video cameras that are mounted up on the traffic signal lights and they point down to detect a certain area. That uh, signal then comes into this unit down here which is processed and sent up to the traffic controller. The traffic controller is basically the brains of the system, has all the settings for all the timings in it, all of that. There's a, roughly about 500 settings inside of that. That is then communicated back to City Hall through this device down here, which goes up to an antenna and goes through a radio system back to the City Hall to the central master system. In this particular scenario, we have a railroad crossing just a few yards from an intersection. Can you explain maybe how that interacts with our traffic signals when a train crosses? Sure. We are connected directly from this box down to the railroad control box by a live circuit that is live and hot all of the time. When the train comes, it actually cuts the circuit and that makes it a fail-safe system. When it cuts the circuit, that trips a railroad preemption program in here that has the lights go through a certain sequence so the vehicles don't conflict with the train. Also, because it is a live circuit, if, for instance, a contractor was to come in and cut the circuit, it would automatically go into that preemption as a fail-safe. We would get a notice back at City Hall and send out repair people. Many of the intersections uh, are owned and operated by the City of Arvada, but some of them aren't. Can you explain kind of the differences? There are several major arterials throughout the city, and I'll name a couple of them. Sheridan, Wadsworth, uh, Ward Road, up to 64th. Uh, those are state highways and they're owned and operated by the Colorado Department of Highways and so are all the traffic signals on them. What kind of criteria do you go through to determine which intersections get uh, you know, the camera or even a light sometimes? Well, I, you know, Bob, I think the first thing that people have to understand is that we just don't go out and install traffic signals wherever people request them. The federal government recognized a long time ago that there had to be some guidelines set out for this and they publish a manual called the Manual on Uniform Traffic Control Devices and that is adopted by the state of Colorado, it's adopted by the Arvada City Council and that is used as our guideline as to where traffic control devices are installed. That even includes stop signs, speed limit signs, but also traffic signals. And in that manual they set forth warrants that have to be met before a signal can be installed. And when we look at those warrants we look at vehicle counts, we look at pedestrian activity, we look at accident history, and uh, if it's a school crossing, things like that. When all of those warrants are met for an intersection, we then take that intersection and we put it on our priority list. And the reason we have a priority list is that traffic signals in this day and age cost anywhere to construct from $180,000 to $300,000 a piece. And we typically try to build about one a year if they're warranted. I also noticed that not all intersections have the cameras. Some have 
what I would call the tripwire in the asphalt where a vehicle would cross over it and then maybe trigger the light. Can you maybe explain uh, why we're moving from that tripwire environment to maybe the cameras and why not all intersections have the cameras today? Right. In Arvada, out of the hundred traffic signals we have, about 40 of them have cameras. And the tripwires that you're talking about, we refer to them as inductance loops. Okay. And they basically are a wire that is embedded in the pavement. Now that wire becomes susceptible to damage by weather, construction crews, or in some of these cases where you'll see an intersection where the pavement rolls because of heavy bus or truck traffic, they tend to go bad. And when they go bad, they go into a fail-safe mode and the signal changes all the time. And that becomes really irritating to the motoring public when they're on a main street and they have to wait for the side street and there's no cars there. So by using the video cameras, we no longer have those problems. So that kind of leads me into the next question of, you know, we're becoming a, a bike friendly community. And I've noticed that you have a sign that says, you know, please pull your bike onto here to trigger the light. So now it sounds like you're programming the cameras to recognize bicyclists. Yes, exactly. At some of the intersections, you will see a bicycle detection area that is marked on the pavement. And we have those video cameras. Uh, part of it is focused at that area and they do pick up the bicycles. Earlier you were discussing some future plans for these intersections and that included putting battery uh, backups inside some of these controller boxes. Could you maybe share some of that insight? Sure. Because the traffic signals are now 24 volt system and we have LED lights up there, they take a much lower voltage than they used to. So we're starting to equip our intersections with battery backup systems, which will basically be another cabinet like this and it's full of batteries that are running and they charge all the time. And when the power goes out, the motorist won't even see the difference. It'll immediately switch to the battery backup system. And we do have a program now where we'll be doing several intersections a year to do that. The first ones we're going to be doing by federal law are the ones that are near railroad crossings. And if we switch to battery backup, how long does those batteries support the light in the intersection? It'll go for about 24 hours or operating normally and then after that when the voltage starts dropping on the batteries it'll go into a flash operation and use less voltage. And when we switch to batteries, City Hall does get a, a signal saying, hey, this intersection is having problems. Can you come and investigate? Yes, it does. It sends a signal back to our master system. We immediately check with XL Energy to see if there's a power outage, and we also dispatch our maintenance crews out. Great. Well, thanks, Joe, for showing me what you do and how these systems work, and thank you for showing me how they do that.